Yaron, and Danny, who are going to be giving their presentation. Thanks. Whenever I drop off the voice, just give me a sign in the back that you can't hear me anymore. Or if I speak too fast, give me also a sign. So I will be presenting an idea that we have about creating a semantic Wikipedia. Um, the first thing is that actually at the very first Wikimania back in Frankfurt in 2005, I gave basically the same talk. Um, by now, we have a little bit more implementation, we have a little bit more experience, and six years have passed, I got older. Um, but was there anyone in that talk back then? Oh, we have two people, great, thanks. So, sorry for the repetitions. Um, what is the actual problem? What do we want to solve here? So, Wikipedia has articles about all the cities in the world, the populations, the mayors, and so on. But still, it's not easy to ask the, the system, what are the world's 10 largest cities with a female mayor? You know, we do have the search box. We can try to enter the question inside it. But what we get back is Manhattan, Chicago, Washington, D.C., St. Louis, Missouri. Good news, they're all cities. Bad news, none of them has a female mayor. Um, but, well, it's unfair, it's a search. I mean, it's not a question answering system. Um, and, but Wikipedia does have an answer to this kind of things, lists. So basically they create, you create, we create lists of everything. So for example, the list of asteroids named after people. It's a great list. You have it not only in English, you have it in um, Norwegian, you have it in Portuguese, you have it in Korean. You have so many other lists on Wikipedia. I mean, this is my favorite one. List of problems solved by Miguel. <laughs> the Germans, being German, have started to categorizing those lists. And they actually created a category of category of categories of lists. No, sorry, a list of lists of lists in a category. So what you get here is a hierarchical list of lists of lists. I'm not kidding, that's what it is. And you actually do find things like list of people by um, occupation, and you find a list of mayor, a list of list of mayors, but there's no list of female mayors inside, and so you cannot answer our original question. This answer is not there in Wikipedia. We have to admit, so this is the list of mayors, we have to admit Wikipedia doesn't have all the answers. <laughs> Why is that? Well, because computers are stupid. You know, when, when, when you see an article, like for example, the uh, city of Karlsruhe, the one I work in, you actually can read it. You can read it, it has a population, that it has a mayor and so on. You, you get all this information. But if a computer looks at it, it basically looks for the computer like this. <laughs> can anyone here read this? I know what this is. You know the uh, script, actually you're the first one ever to know what the script is. It's Georgian, great, yeah. So this is Georgian. If you think about it, it does look a little bit like Coca-Cola, so it, yeah, it has a connection to Georgia. Um, and what the computer really sees is basically, well, we're on a page about Karlsruhe. We have numbers, we have connections to other entities like Germany and so on, but the computer doesn't understand the connections. They don't understand what it is. And this is where the computer needs our help. And uh, the proposal is basically, to take the articles as they are the, with the links they have and not only have the category information inside uh, the articles, which is basically the only kind of metadata we have now besides the link structure, but also add further metadata to each of the articles. For example, to say this one is not only a city, it has a population of 740,000, it has an area of 40 square kilometers, this one has a birth date, and so on. And once you do that, you can actually start making queries. Um, and the second thing is you connect, uh, the you actually type the links. You give the links a meaning. You just don't say, there's a link between Karlsruhe and Germany. You actually say, Karlsruhe is located in Germany. And once you have that, you can all do all kinds of fancy stuff. I'm handing over now to Jaron Koren, one of the leading developers of Semantic Media Wiki, to give you an introduction in how in the last six years we did something. Um, in the last six years, we did tackle this problem. Right, thanks. Um, Okay, so uh, what we're talking about is Semantic Media Wiki, which is an extension that, uh, as Danny pointed out, started in 2005, uh, right around the time of the first Wikimania. Um, it, uh, and the idea, as he said, is it allows you to store data within wiki pages, uh, both for use in the wiki, uh, as Danny said, and also to uh, be exported uh, to any other um, um, you know, consumer of data on the web. Um, 
So here's the basic uh, idea for tagging. You have this, um, this uh, double square bracket and double colon syntax, which you use to, uh, to specify the property and the value. Uh, and the, uh, the uh, originating page is always the, the subject of that statement. Um, so y y this is sort of a classic example for semantic media wiki. You know, you inc include it within a sentence uh, uh, to the user. It just it just displays the number, and then on the back end, it stores the data, and and so you can you know uh, annotate free text in that way. But actually, this is not really a good example anymore because uh, the vast vast majority of uh, semantic media wiki data is actually stored via infobox style templates. So the the main part of the page is completely untagged. You store everything within the template, and then the template itself takes care of all the semantic tags and so forth, so, so that if you're just looking at the source of the page, you wouldn't even know that it's tagged semantically at all because the template takes care of everything. Um, so it takes care of, of the, you know, the defining the data structure for each page. Um, so uh, the project itself, we... Um, it's, it's become a significant thing. It's become a pretty big deal in the last six years. We have our own website, uh, at, at, which you can, I definitely recommend to go to for further information, semantic-mediawiki.org. Uh, we have mailing lists, an IRC channel, Twitter feed, all the usual stuff. Um, we have, uh, for the last few years, a, a biannual conference uh, called SMWCon. Uh, the next one is coming up next month in Berlin. Um, and uh, and as of a few days ago, we have our own uh, nonprofit organization, uh, OSDA, as well, which is vaguely like the Wikimedia Foundation, but on a on a much on a tiny scale. Uh, but it's it's there to handle funding and, and hopefully to you know add more structure to um, the organization and the uh, and the development process. Uh, oh, and I I didn't mention, but it, it's uh, it, it's in use on. At, at this point, hundreds of wikis, uh, public and private, within uh, within uh, enterprises and organizations and stuff. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, besides Semantic Media Wiki as an extension, it's also sort of a family of extensions. There's there's uh, there's over 30 active offshoot extensions that um, uh, that add on to sem Semantic Media Wiki functionality in various ways um, to help display the data uh, in maps and all sorts of uh, things like that to help with editing. Browsing, import, expo export workflow, which is interesting. Um, the most well-known one is semantic forms, uh, but I, I'll I'll, dem I'll do a demo of a few of these. Um, and then, uh, interesting, there are some extensions that created with with semantic media wiki specifically in mind, but they're not actually semantic media wiki based. Uh, and you, you may have seen some of them, like maps and replace text. Um, is this a good time to? Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, just briefly, we uh, there was just a new version of 1.6 that came out a week or two ago, um, and the the cool new thing about it is that it lets you store the data directly in what's known as an RDF triple store. If you know about the semantic web, you've probably heard this buzzword at some point. But um, uh, Virtuoso is is one of them. Um, so th the basic idea is, you know, that's sort of the, the what people perceive as the future of the semantic web, where you store data in a in a system that's directly configured for for handling semantic triples uh, instead of just a regular database like MySQL, where you can where you can you know mimic that functionality. Uh, so now you guess we can say we're we're truly semantic. Uh, Right. Okay. Well, uh, uh, there are different conceptions of the semantic web, but one common one is to talk about triples. Um, and you saw that before with Haifa, population, and then a number. Um, okay. So, so uh, this is basically, it's like a database that's configured specifically for only storing lots of triples. Uh, and it's, I, I've never actually seen one in use, I don't think, but, um, in in theory, it's it's much more it's much more well suited for that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Oops. So let me just show you a few examples of it uh, in use. How do I go back here? Um, okay. So um, here's a here's a cool uh, website, Open Energy Info. It's uh, it's run by the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, and uh, oh, what did I just do? Click. Uh, one of the pages they have is this map of clean energy companies. They actually have a bunch of different maps. This is uh, enabled by an extension called Semantic Maps, uh, which 
uh, displays all the all this coordinate data uh, using Google Maps. So let me just um, well, I pre-clicked, which is probably easier. So if I, if you click on any one of these points, you can get to the page for that. So I actually did that before. Uh, uh, yeah. So so you can see here this info box. This one's in Israel. Um, uh, which and this is where all the semantic data is stored within this template. Uh, so then, if you click on this Edit with Form uh, tab, which is defined by the Semantic Forms extension, you can see this form. Uh, and forms are actually defined within the within the page within the wiki itself. Each form is is defined using a special syntax uh, within a wiki page. Uh, so it's pretty easy to create forms for users to uh, add and edit the data instead of having to. Uh, to learn uh, the template syntax, um, so so you know this is its own whole thing, and there's been lots of discussion about template editing and all that, but um, we're not going to get into that. But this is this exists and it's it's used a lot. Um, so um, here's another example. This is uh, Aka Wiki, which is uh, an a, a wiki for sharing uh, information about academic papers. Um, so if you click on this Browse Summaries link in the sidebar, um, you can see you can see this page here, which is defined by uh, by which is enabled by an extension called Semantic Drill Down, uh, which lets you drill down through the semantic data, um, and it shows this is kind of a monstrosity, but you can. Uh, you can drill down based, based on various facets, which each of which corresponds to a semantic property. So um, anybody want to look at a specific subject? Anything? Um, let's do computer science. Um, so if you click on uh, one of those, you can, you know, you can cl keep clicking on things to narrow down the mechanical Turk. I don't know. Uh, you can cl keep clicking on values to narrow down um, uh, what you're looking for, and then click on a specific thing. And here, oh, okay. Here it's it's worded differently, but the the edit tab actually is the the form tab. You can use edit source to get the, the you know a standard uh, edit interface. And then uh, you have this form here. So that's the demo. Uh, and so finally. Um, you know, as as Denny alluded to, one of the the main reasons for creating Semantic Media Wiki in the first place was using it on Wikipedia, uh, not on you know all these other sites. But um, that was how do I get rid of that formatting palette? Oops. Okay. Um, so actually, that's that's by far more complicated than than getting it on any smaller uh, wiki, uh, you know, non non Wikimedia wiki. Uh, and the big reason for that is because smaller wikis don't have to be multi-language, whereas the uh, the Wikimedia sites are. Um, and ideally, all language sites should use the same data instead of having to repeat one's data over and over again. So Semantic Media Wiki can't support that yet. Dot, dot, dot. So, so thanks, Yaron. Um, uh, the next thing is I want to present Wikidata. Wikidata is a proposal that we are currently working on to submit to the Wikimedia Foundation in order to get actually this thing for real. Um, the idea of Wikidata is not to, as we originally envisioned, is not to actually change the Wikipedias to make each of them semantic, but rather have one Wikidata comments, like, 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 like the comments, but not for media, multimedia files, but for data. And then the Wikipedias could access the central data store, the central knowledge base. The knowledge base would be multilingual and uh, be able to edit this kind of data. Um, I quickly look into the what, so how, how would this work, um, and then probably just came up with the why and how in, in uh, interest of time. So last year we developed a prototype called Shortipedia, which actually implements a lot of the features that we want to see in Wikidata. So what you get here is basically you connect to Wikipedia entries, you can switch the languages, um, you have labels for all of the things, you we're pulling data from the web of data from, or for these topics, and for each of the facts that you see here, 
you can't only say that, for example, the Information Sciences Institute is a part of the University of Southern California, but for each and single fact, you can actually also add sources from the web to it. So one of the ideas in Wikidata is that we don't define truth. We don't say, you know, the population of Jerusalem is 1.5 million, but we only say, according to this source, the population of Jerusalem is 1.5 million. According to that source, the population of Jerusalem is uh, something like this. Um, this question? The, we had, so the, the question is, yes, it's time dependent, definitely. Um, so the question there was, uh, if the sources change, does the fact change accordingly? Um, not automatically, but we want to save the piece of text that you think is actually connecting to the source, and then we can change automatically if, this, if the source has changed, and tell users, oh look, there's someone who has annotated this to be the, uh, the source. Maybe you want to take a look if it has changed and how you want to update it. The second piece of inf uh, the question was here, some of these kinds, uh, some of these information is time dependent. This is absolutely correct, and um, we have to deal with that. That you can add further metadata to these uh, to these um, to these facts. For example, the context like time. But then triples are not enough. No, triples are not enough. I fully agree. Um, so this is just a mock-up how it could look like, basically. So you have all these kind of uh, things. You can add new properties. You have auto-completion in these areas based on the topics that we have inside it. But it's really just a mock-up because Shortipedia, as it is, if you go to it, you can actually try it out and play with it. But it has a lot of stuff around it. It's very semantic webby. And that's, that's not to be part of uh, Wikidata, basically. Um, so the project plan, as it's currently suggested, is to have three phases. The first phase is to unify interwiki links, as we have seen already in the presentation before, in order to get the base of entities that we have um, available. The second phase is infobox augmentation, so that the information that are currently inside the infoboxes and that are instantiated in the article text can actually be pulled from Wikidata instead, so that, uh, so that you can query the Wikidata and the infobox instantiation becomes much simpler because you don't have to do it um, on site. And the third one would be inline queries, what Yaron demonstrated earlier, where you can actually query Wikidata and get back lists or visualizations of the data on a map or of graphs or whatever. Um, the first two phases are computationally very cheap because we're just doing lookup. And the third phase can become arbitrarily expensive, so there we have to really figure out what kind of complexity of queries you want to allow. So on interwiki links, we already had a presentation before, which I'm very thankful be, uh, because I can skip this slide, basically. Um, the idea here is that we all know that interwiki links have been uh, dis debated for years now, and that there are a lot of social troubles around it in replacing them. Um, the, the suggestion in Wikidata is actually not just to switch Wikidata on and pull all the Wikidata links from there, but rather to introduce a magic word where you can say in a page, okay, for this page, I want to use the Wikidata interwiki links. So we are not forced to do it. If you have further information, for example, favorite articles, or if you want to um, make annotations to the interwiki links, you can still do it. Or sometimes the situation is more complex than just one-to-one -one mappings, as we all know. Sometimes the, uh, you point to one article, the article points to another one, and, and stuff like this. And the interwiki links are not wholly consistent, and some of them are uh, meant to be not consistent. So in these cases, actually, you can just use it as the way as you want to. But if, for other cases, it does fit, the you actually use a centralized data store, you can do it. So this is not pushing anything into, uh, into any, at anyone. We know that there are a lot of social problems with the whole thing, and we try to create a, a really fitting incentive structure and a really smooth <coughs> pathway that allows the community to adapt to it at their own speed. I hope this makes sense, what I'm saying now. Um, in phase two, as I said, infobox augmentation, we presented uh, basically this already that you can uh, have pulling in infoboxes the data from the central data store so that once you edit the data, for example, you update the population of a city, you don't have to go to each of the language editions to do that, but it would be in the centralized data store, so you keep main, you, uh, the, maintain, the maintenance costs keep lowering and you can pull it from one place. And finally, inline queries, which makes you can create graphs, you can create map views of the whole data and look at it. Um, I have a whole section on why this should be done, but is anyone convinced, not convinced that this is a good idea? 
Who is convinced that Wikidata might be a good idea? Okay, so I don't have to tell you why we want to do Wikidata. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> because just in the question of, t uh, just in the interest of time, I'd rather have more time for questions than to t uh, for me telling you stuff. Um, so that's basically there. Uh, the, the quick overview, have a database of the world's knowledge that anyone can edit. Uh, this should directly feed into the uh, foundation's uh, goals. Collect reference and quotes for millions of data items. Engage a sustainable community. That's why we have this whole incentive structure. Increase the quality of the data. Lower the maintenance cost of generating those data stuff and deliver software and community best practices by learning how Wikidata is built to other communities so that other communities can build their own Wikidata-like systems as well for their specific communities. Okay, I'm not going through the points. I have slides on all of these. Um, this is just a very confusing infrastructure architecture picture, um, but basically the Wikipedias would be the clients using the Wikidata data, pulling it together, in the, but you understand it already. So, now we still have almost 20 minutes for question, which is great, because I hope that you have some questions. Oh, Daniel wants to say something. Sure. I would like to add some points that were maybe not entirely clear. Um, one thing is, uh, there was a short question about that, about um, how this fit, fits into triples. Um, as, as opposed to the classic semantic media wiki, Wikidata will not be using the RDF data model because you cannot easily or efficiently fit that kind of structured data into, into RDF. So we are um, basically looking for a data model where you can augment individual values with additional information. And uh, the th second thing that maybe wasn't entirely clear is where and how to edit the data. Um, if things go as I would like them to go, and we, we plan to do this, is um, then people can edit Infobox data directly on the page. They don't have to go to, to a different project and learn all the rules there and stuff. Well, you should know the basic rules for editing data records, of course, but um, the idea is to actually allow people to edit info boxes as they see them. Not in the wiki in the page source code and not on some different project but just in place. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, just a very quick thing before we go to the questions. Um, we actually have put up on Meta the technical proposal. So it's on metawikipedia.org, new Wikidata. It's also linked from just Wikidata, but so this is the, you will find the technical proposal there with a lot of more detail of how we intend to go ahead about implementing it. But this is, as I said, just a proposal, and we are definitely looking now for your input on this all thing. Questions? Sure. Um, a comment, I think, that it might be um, for a soft landing for the project. It might be worthwhile to start with something like um, uh, chemical info boxes and element info boxes where the data is um, uncontroversial and unlikely to change soon because then you can have a nice test case. I fully agree that it would be nice, but actually it's much more of a hassle to limit this kind of things to certain pages. Than not, but. Uh, but I assume that the social interactions that will turn around this will actually focus on specific wiki projects first and not on others. But on the other hand, there's one thing I really want to state. I don't think that the task of the wiki project is to even think about the content. This is all up to the community. We're not deciding on the content. We're not deciding which properties go, which elements. Are. This is every, we're just providing the infrastructure just like the Wikimedia Foundation only provides basically the wiki. They're not deciding which topics go in and which don't, and neither do we. So th this is not, uh, so this, this kind of content related address questions, I defer to the community and say we shouldn't be uh, mixing up with this. Yeah. So my, my question is, do you intend to take all of the existing info boxes and turn them into Wikidata automatically? No automatics here. So, um, no, because I don't trust automatic stuff like this. And we have a lot of people who are much smarter than computers. Uh, you said that there are many websites which already use this technology. Uh, in which languages are they except English? 
there are pages in um, German, in Hebrew, in um, Arabic, in French. Actually, we have, lang we have translations in over 60 languages. I haven't seen wikis in all of those languages, but the yeah, soft... All, the all of them? Okay. Um, but there are many languages, also right to left languages, especially. So just, sorry, there was... Yes, it's obviously clear in this model how uh, Wikipedia editors will be adding data. Uh, who will be responsible, who will monitor on the expansion of the schema? Um, so the schema is also in the hand of the community, and we as a project don't decide how the community will organize around this. We will provide ways to protect stuff, just as on, Wiki on Wikipedia, um, but the community has to find a way to organize themselves around it, and we're not deciding on this thing. And I assume, my, my, my personal assumption is that Wikidata will basically create its own community that will be interacting a lot with the language Wikipedias, but I really don't know how it will look in real. Uh, if, uh, if a piece of data is changed, it is very easy to undo the change. If somebody changes the schema, mistakenly or maliciously, it can ruin the whole database. Um, actually, no. We have a lot of experience with Semantic Media Wiki with soft schema changes. So we, 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 are, we are aware of this problem. Actually, the software can deal with it very well. But it's, it's an obvious change. But we can deal with that. There are basically two ways to deal with that. One is uh, the thing we do now for a lot of that kind of data. Basically have a bot, uh, look at the original source and import whatever we want and need to the data wiki or Wikipedia. The other way is to directly transclude data from different sources than Wikidata. Um, I don't think this really belongs to this project. I think the experience with transcluding data from, from a centralized project will help us to build uh, the, the extensions or whatever we need to also address this. Are you proposing a set of uh, metadata tags that are language and culture invariant or would be this be these metadata tags would be culture specific or language specific? I seriously don't know the answer to this question. I think this is a really, really important question. And um, I have to say, I don't know. So all the metadata tags would be internationalizable, which means you give them labels in all of the languages. But you are insofar right that there might be conceptual differences between the meaning of the properties from culture to culture. And um, I think this is a very hard question. I don't know the answer to it. And I think we can start Wikidata with looking at those properties where we do have common agreement on them. And it will be really interesting to ha see what happens with those more problematic ones. And I don't know. That's actually one of the reasons why in the beginning, in 2005, we suggested to translate all the language Wikipedias into semantic ones. Because in that case, every language community would be responsible for their own conceptualization. It would be interesting to see differences between them. Um, but there are, there are a ton of people, and I got convinced by now, that we should have one centralized data store, a data commons, just like for pictures. Uh, but this means exactly to deal with these kinds of problems. And let's see. I, really, I think that's a very, very valid question. And that's one where I don't have an answer to. Can you shout? So you started describing two problems, one of dealing data, let's say in Haifa there is so and so many people, and then dealing links, the capital of, so 
I, and do, did, I think I understood how Wikidata handled the data problem, but do you address also the linking problem? Yes, as you can see in the screenshots. So basically, whenever we have to create a linking problem, uh, sorry, to solve a linking problem, um, you basically start entering an entity and we get a semantic autocompletion based on what the entities are there that we know, or you need to create a new entity. So this is basically a solution for the linking problem. And those entities, again, are linked to the Wikipedia articles. So this is like the picture that you saw in the beginning with the, uh, with the boxes that are connected to each other. So this also deals with. There's one question in the back. Can you shout or? Do you want to answer? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, if you want to see the actual text. Um, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> isn't that what? Isn't well, OK. Here's, uh, here, I, I, I just have it uh, just strictly for curiosity. Um, this, uh, you have the, it, it's these, the, this ask uh, function here. Uh, it takes in um, categories and properties and stuff, and then you, you, you set the, the properties you want to print out and the format. In this case, it's the map format. But actually, the basic case is just a table format. Um, uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a parser function. It comes with its own syntax. It's, it's not as bad as it looks, I guess. As, um, as Danny mentioned before, um, this kind of query can get uh, arbitra arbitrarily expensive. So for the Wikipedia or Wikidata use case, we will be very likely be limiting it uh, very strictly, in the, at least in the beginning. Um, well, the, the first kind of query that would probably be allowed is what we now use to create these, these lists. So you would specify the type of thing you're looking for, like a city, and you would specify one property. I don't know, cities starting with an A or cities with so and so and so many people in them. So this would be the most basic kind of query. And for this limited kind of query, you of course can also use a much simpler syntax. If we have the the right backend, if we have the computational power to allow more allow more complex queries, we will need a more complex query, query language. And in the end, maybe we will support this or Sparkle or whatever. So maybe you should explain Sparkle. I don't think I should explain <laughs> Sparkle. Okay. Um, Okay. It's not listening anyway, so. <laughs> uh, what about providing a, a more graphical user interface for doing the search? So if, if someone doesn't want to learn the syntax for doing uh, that, maybe sort of a faceted search where they can just say, I want one of these and one of these and link them together. Full agreement. Uh, th in the plan, we have this kind of interfaces to actually create them. Um, and we intend to do that. On the other hand, also, since all of the data is fully exported and made available, we actually also envision that external pages will create even much smarter interfaces than we could even think of about yet. Something obvious to do would, of course, be uh, to combine the semantic drill down we saw earlier with a normal search interface. That would be the simplest thing, I guess. Further questions? Um, I, yes, I've just got a question about, um, your, you said that, that your goal, what you would like to be able to do, would be for anyone to, um, to go to the um, info box, change the value, and then um, it's been updated. Now, if you're watching a page in a different language, would that then appear on the, watch on the, on the change list? Bas basically, uh, it will have to. Otherwise, we have a big problem. Um, and this is one of the challenges, how to do this efficiently and not annoy people with a lot of noise. But I think uh, this is a solvable problem. But I think it's a good thing because it means you've got more eyeballs on all the data. Yes, of course. Context. Yes, of course. Uh, I also envision that it would be useful to at least for, for admins or people who, who want it to highlight things that have recently been changed. So you, you look at a page and you see all this information and some of them have like a little sticker on them which say, okay, this has been changed and maybe not been looked at or something like that.
Uh, I yesterday talked talked with Danny and uh, I uh, did some uh, work uh, on uh, statistics data and uh, you usually have uh, censuses every 10 years and I uh, recall rec uh, recollect that you said that uh, y you can click and uh, uh, see if data is updated. Maybe you can, uh, maybe we create a, uh, some census data, uh, can have field uh, uh, update every 10 years. I agree. I don't think it's the task of the technical side of the project. It's again a task for the community to decide which kind of data they want to import from which sources and also what this means for the, uh, f uh, for the rest of the project. So uh, we will provide APIs that will allow for automatic changing of the data, automatic updating of the data, automatic downloading of the data, um, but we won't be uh, updating the data ourselves and we won't be importing, mass importing data from outside at all. This is up to you. The time aspect of uh, stuff like census data populations and, and so on is actually quite interesting. You could have one value and simply change it when no new information becomes available, so you have basically just a version update, but I think you, we would lose information that way. It would be much nicer to say, okay, this is the value from 2007, this is the value from 2010, this is the value from 1967 or whatever. And so having qu this kind of, this level of qualification of, of individual data points would um, be very powerful, very useful. It's not, well, it's not trivial to make that work because you would also have to have the notion of something like the most current value and the system has to understand that and basically give you the most current value per default. It is something that we have in mind. I cannot promise that it will be there in the very first installment, but um, it is definitely something to look at. So since our time is actually running out. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you get excited about our projects the same way as I do. And help us with the thing, bug everyone to tell them and tell them that this is a great thing that you really want to have had this happen, okay? Oh, and by the way, we're currently, don't tell anyone, we're currently looking for funding for this whole thing. So if you see, have a lot of money around, Talk to me. Giving a presentation this morning. Yeah, thank you and hello everybody. My name is Niels, as introduced. I'm from Germany. I'm from a tiny university in Saxony. At, uh, we are located very close to the border to Poland and Czech Republic. And today I would like to present uh, a concept about how to offering hyper videos uh, within wiki engines. So I'm in the f active in the field of hypervideo research for four years now, and today I would uh, present you an extension or discuss with you an extension on how to do this, uh, how to produce hypervideos within wikis. Um, the agenda of the presentation uh, is um, is about uh, first of starts with the motivation, and I will t like to introduce our present some features about of videos um, and highlight some special properties of them. And I would also uh, give a glance on related works before I start to present user interface concepts. You know, all this is uh, especially about user interface design of time-related media. I will present some concepts I have developed in the past years and also I the mean part, I will show you the solution I have developed now and which I am testing in a use case uh, which is about uh, a wiki of a, where a book is uh, represented. Uh, the book is about a concentration camp and um, we included uh, oral history videos inside that wiki and yeah. The motivation of all it uh, starts with, uh, with a site of Tim Berners-Lee who said that editing the web is as important as browsing. And I was asking myself, uh, what, what's about if there are 80% of the internet traffic is coming from videos? Uh, are we able to edit videos in the same way or in a similar way as we are able to, uh, to browse videos? Of course, there are big video portals like YouTube and others who are able to browse them. We can, we can watch them. But is there a way that we can 
compose videos inside uh, a wiki, for example, in Wikipedia, in the same way as you can prepare, uh, prepare text. Hypervideo, in special, is a, is a hypermedia representation of hypertext. So hypertext has, as you know, text with links inside. Hypervideos is similar, but inside the video, at a specific point of time, there will be a hyperlink which has a duration and you can click to follow, uh, to go up with on another page or another video. Um, so the question is, are, are videos already accessible for editing or can we use wikis as an appropriate tool to collaborative edit text and video? Current wikis have some limitations uh, when it comes to the composition and manipulation of videos. Uh, First of all, the characteristic temporal peculiarities of videos are not addressed. Uh, videos are almost handled like an uh, atomar, uh, li like an uh, atom. So that means you can set them on a, on a position on the page, but you can't do any uh, further things with the time. So you can start a video, you can stop it, you can move the slider, but that's it. There, it's not possible to define a hyperlink which brings you to a specific point in time. You know, at YouTube it's possible, but at wikis not. Um, wikis are hypertext systems, but do not support hypervideos, as I said. And the authoring of videos is much more complex. I'm not talking here about a high-end video production, but at least I wish to see that it will be possible to compose videos. That means you take a few videos uh, which you have uh, produced uh, or captured with your mobile device and put them together in a specific order. Uh, some simple things. And also, it would be nice if you can, if it would be, if it would be possible to interrelate uh, different videos or videos which are inside a wiki page. Features of videos are Oh, what's that? Sorry. Who's Philip? <laughs> I don't know him, it's not my... Sorry. Can you switch it up? Anyway, um, videos have a special property that they can transport all symbolic systems. That means all levels of details can be transferred by videos. Also, static images and, as you know, spoken words and uh, written languages, as, subti as subtitles, for example. And what happened? Oh, what's this? Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> very special social um, that you can visualize motion and interaction, se interaction sequences. As you all know or might know, uh, YouTube has a couple of examples of how you could uh, learn with videos. Uh, oh no, that's wrong. Um, I would. Uh, add that there's something special about the temporal dimension. So uh, when it comes to learning, because I think wikis are primarily learning systems or systems where you can get information uh, which is important for you. And so it makes sense that videos will be part of it because they can visualize uh, realistic situations and also vivid situations. For example, dialogues between people. Or, um, also, they are very good uh, if you want to show processes uh, which are spatiotemporal. For example, if people are dancing. Have you ever tried to describe how someone is dancing tango? It's impossible. You need to see a sequence of images. And the same is uh, with motion and interaction of sequences. Uh, uh, in sports or in driving school here, or if you uh, want to explain something, how to build some um, yeah, open hardware, for example, uh, so, or nautical notes. There are so many examples uh, which could be uh, an, a, a very good addition to existing uh, wiki articles. So at the Wikipedia at the moment, um, uh, it's quite calm if you are looking at uh, the existing videos. There have been some initiatives uh, to, to push videos inside Wikipedia, but they, they are not quite, uh, yeah, they're kind of old, you know, at the website, uh, videos on Wikipedia has the last entry uh, one year ago. 
And if you are looking at the featured videos on Wikipedia, these are 35, I was wondering when I started yesterday that 11 of these 35 videos were related to war and military. So what's this? Is it all about uh, Wikipedia that we need to show uh, military videos there? Isn't there anything more uh, human and humanity things? We should change that, I think. But as I know, it's not that easy to bring videos inside, and videos are kind of specific. I will show later. Uh, so the first uh, conclusions are that uh, moving images can communicate things which other media cannot. And videos are sometimes superior to text. Not, not all the time. I, I, will, I will not say that uh, Wikipedia should consist just of videos. <laughs> it's, no. But videos can improve learning outcome. But if you want to tell something how to dance or how to construct something, for example. So questions about wiki-based collaborative video authoring are how can we escape the text dominance in order to fulfill multimedia learning principles a little bit? And also how can we enrich wiki word processors for adequate hyper video authoring? The way how we are editing wiki articles uh, is very similar to word processors, like Word. You know, you know all the buttons are at the top to make something bold or uh, italic or so. It's, it all comes from word processing. The system is not made to, to edit videos or to include videos. Uh, another example is that many users have uh, difficulties to include uh, just images into Wikipedia, but it's not that clear. So how can, another question is, how can we interlink text passages and video sequences? That means you should be able to click a link to come on a specific uh, point in time at the video, and opposite, you should click a link inside the video to come to a new wiki page or to an external resource. Now when it come to related uh, works, uh, first of all, there are a couple of learning systems you might all know. YouTube is the most famous, I think. Um, I don't know how many videos are there at YouTube Education or how many users are using it. There are no statistics at all. But they going in the right direction. Uh, um, they have time-related annotations. Uh, you can add hyperlinks with, uh, related to time. There are subtitles and things like that. Uh, but it's YouTube. <laughs> it's a commercial system. Uh, the videos are not under a free license at all. Um, another very uh, inspiring system is Jovisto. It's a German startup. Um, it's really big. There are thousands or maybe millions of videos or lectures of universities there. Uh, they have time-related discussions and slides, but all these interactions are outside the video. YouTube, uh, iTunes U, you all might know, the Khan Academy was mentioned a few times here at Wikimedia uh, conference. It's, power uh, it's a very powerful blackboard approach. Other systems uh, which are more related to wikis, the uh, most famous one might be Kaltura. Uh, who of you uh, knows Kaltura? Who, uh, who has used it uh, already? Okay, thank you. So Kaltura is um, yeah, it's a user interface. It's uh, based on timelines. It's very simple to use. It can be integrated in several systems, not just wikis. Um, yeah, but the bad thing is, or I think, uh, it has no hyperlink or no no possibilities to annotate hyperlinks, and it's not possible for you to see the source of that what you have done inside the interface. So there's no rep representation, like. You know, if you're adding, editing a text, you see what you have done afterwards, you see the wiki source with uh, all the syntax and stuff, but at Kaltura not. So another visionary concept comes from Blankenship and Mika in the year 2007. It's called Video Wiki. It's made, uh, it was made for children. Um, the concept was very simple. They, you were uploading a video, the video was analyzed, the text was analyzed and was, uh, yeah, they, um, they transferred a voice to text so that you can easily edit and rearrange text passages. 
This is very nice. It has no hyperlinks, but the concept is cool. Uh, here on this rails on the left, you have a kind of timeline, which is uh, vertical, special. But it's not suitable for all cases. Just imagine if you have a video where no one is speaking, so you w won't have any text, so you can't edit anything. The tango example, someone is dancing tango. Usually people don't speak, so you won't have text. You won't be able to rearrange everything. Um, a newer example, a uh, newer related work is Popcorn and Butter. It's a software framework, Popcorn, and Butter is um, an application to annotate time-related information like maps, like Wikipedia articles, or hyperlinks. It's possible um, to develop a plugin where you can use it. Sad thing, again, because I think syntax and uh, open editing source is important, you won't have anything like that. You just have a player, you have the interface, you can see everything. But it, it's not bad, you can do a lot of that. Um, now I will present uh, quickly some user interface concepts really, which are kind of weird, but I will show you what would be, uh, what could be possible, maybe in other uh, contexts as well. First there's a multi-tracking timeline. Uh, you know, uh, almost all video editing systems have multi-track or consist of multiple tracks. Uh, these could be used to relate videos or uh, to annotate hyperlinks between several videos to get a whole network of videos. So, as you see, the, the hyperlinks have a, temp a temporal position. They start here, they have a, uh, have a specific duration. And you might also uh, define the spatial position inside the video frame. And this, by far, is not what, uh, what you see is not what you get at the end. So it's very complex, um, could be made better, of course. So let's look an, at another approach. Um, I call it, it a graph-based circular timeline concept. Um, it looks a bit like a piggy pack, because timeline is going around the video. It's uh, similar to a clock. Clock starts at the top at 12 and goes around when the video is finished, it's again up there. And you have some piggy packs on it, and these packs are the hyperlinks. They have a start and the end again. It's very nice because you can see, or you can connect the piggy packs with other videos and see the, the hyperlink structure, but this doesn't scale. It's also a bit complex, uh, but nice and stylish. Uh, another simple thing uh, you might know from YouTube is uh, so-called direct manipulation user interfaces. Uh, that what you see is almost what you get. It's very simple to learn. Um, some people may say you will get lost in hyperspace, that, but this uh, happened 20 years uh, before again, when people started to edit uh, hyperlinks on, on the internet. But question is, the, about the inference with text editing, so we will see. Uh, the fourth concept is about the wiki markup. So this is a proposal for a markup extension. That means at the moment uh, we just have a tag uh, at, wiki, at Wikipedia for our wiki, media wiki to add videos. We don't have anything which tells or which tells the system that we would like just to see a sequence of the video. So we, in this example, uh, from the whole video, it start, the player will start at 10 seconds for 100 and second, uh, 120 seconds duration. Uh, furthermore, there are hyperlink annotations signed by a plus and the name of the wiki page, the name of the external resource, uh, and also if you want a position within the video or uh, some time information. This is also not that what you will get, because there it might be uh, preferred for expert users, but it's a way um, to highlight uh, machine readability of the information. And it's compatible with text editing, as you see uh, at the top. It means uh, you could easily include and write straight away uh, your or annotate your hyperlinks and include your videos. So 
uh, the concluding requirements for a system would be that incoming and outgoing time-related links should exist or should be possible. The source is important, as I said a few times, uh, for ease, uh, to, to foster the ease of learning. It's important that, uh, yeah, that you uh, that the users see what they get afterwards, and it should be scalable. I'm coming now to the solution, which consists of the mixture between the direct user interface, uh, direct uh, manipulation interfaces, and the wiki syntax. That means um, I've just uh, developed a plugin. Plugin with has two further interfaces. Where the first one is to insert videos. It's very simple. You can uh, just upload the video or take it from a library, and then you can define the the range of of time you would like to show. And the number interface, the second is about adding hyperlinks, where you have to define the position where the hyperlink should appear. The hyperlink, the position is static. It doesn't change dynamically, and it's not related to the person in the video, but it's just the first step. And you also can modify the temporal parameters. Everything you change in the visual interface, you will see afterwards in the text editor and vice versa. The, here's a detailed um, listing of the markup extensions. Um, I've already explained almost of that. You will find it uh, yeah, in the internet later on. You can see my slides and send me emails if you're uh, happy with it or if you think that should be changed or come in a different order. Uh, the player interface is here very very simple. This is an approach which has tags as well, but it's not that important. Um, which I want to say uh, important is that you will see uh, that you will see a visualization of the hyperlink existence on the timeline. So that means on the timeline you can see, oh, there's a link. Let's go there and follow the link. Uh, yeah, it's kind of scalable. But another important thing to uh, about consistency is the link design. That means every link uh, consists uh, of an icon and text behind it because you need to know where you're going. Uh, the link design is important because there are different link standard links which are inside a wiki system and there are also external links which um, relate to other resources. Link cycles are a special type. I won't talk any further about that. But uh, multidirectional links are very interesting. It's interesting uh, in case when it comes to several resources you want to link. That means these kind of links are indirect. First you click on them, then you see a kind of menu and you can choose which resource you want to see. Uh, I have made it real. Uh, it means I have implemented um, extensions for several wiki systems, not just for MediaWiki, also for Truepal. Implementation um, was based on HTML5, and I was heavily using jQuery libraries and developed their own library, which is very huge. And this part about hyperlinks and stuff is just a tiny portion of it. Uh, this will be freely available in the next couple of months. Um, so far, there's also a use case ongoing. Um, we started a project in April this year where we transferred a source of a book, a book about uh, two concentration camps in Germany. Uh, I have done the research for a couple of years, and I was unhappy to see everything inside the book, and now they transferred it to PDF and put it in the internet. But from a, it was impossible to relate the primary sources of the book with the text. So I had a lot of uh, oral history videos or news videos uh, related to that concentration camps, and I wanted to make a connection between the text and the videos. You know, if these old people who were survivors of the concentration camps uh, are talking about facts that happened in the camp, it should be possible to uh, make a connection to the specific parts of the books as well. So that's what we are doing. Uh, we That means um, it's not just me, that there are two historians and two teachers involved in the project. They are transferring all the contents, they set hyperlinks. They are annotating the, the videos at all. There are about 20 hyper videos inside that. So the project isn't finished. Uh, it's not published at the moment. But So this has been a snapshot of the current state. 
and I, I wish to get some comments about uh, these ideas and um, I'm open to new inspirations of you. So, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? So, please. Um, I have this just local on my computer. Um, I should have bring some video with it to just to show it. Yes. Um, sorry, I don't have it with me. Yes, uh, that's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, I will set the link there. Um, there's also, oh yeah, you can see, uh, if you follow this link, there there's a hyper video, but it's not included in the wiki. There's uh, two showcases there. If you type it and you will see two showcases. But not the wiki, excuse me. Yeah, please. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, I think it can be used because uh, the technology I've been using is is open, and it's just a question of uh, uh, about the extension of the wiki syntax. Oh, so yeah. I mean, uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Uh, another application would be to include subtitles, for example, uh, of videos. You know, some sources are in foreign languages and Wikipedia is international. This is a very good way. On the discussion page, it could also be used to make comments to about our existing video. I mean, the user could say, oh, this scene of video is not really good, you should clear it, or you should extend it, you, we mean uh, that there is new material needed, or something like that. So interactive videos are, yeah, a much bigger topic. It's not just about hyperlinks. Okay, last question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That means you could, for example, if you have a long video for of a, let's say, a, a Charlie Chaplin film, which is almost creative comment, uh, public domain, I mean, you can use parts of the film at several websites. One website is about Charlie Chaplin, the other website is about the film. So you can reuse it. You just have one video, but the annotation is different. Thank you. We can have you after the microphone, please. Give me your If anybody still has more questions, Niels will be around afterwards. And okay. Um, the next. Uh, first of all, excuse me for my poor English. <laughs> and um, I'll try uh, my best. Uh, uh, yes, I'll try. I came, I came to Wikipedia in, uh, from another side. I, I am a researcher, and when I saw what, uh, what is the um, situation with Armenian um, wiki content, I was surprised and uh, disappointed. That's why I, uh, um, I um, uh, started to... Um, uh, to f uh, full content, uh, to, to improve the content. And uh, I understood that only um, my um, forces, uh, my friends' forces, it is not enough. 
and uh, I, um, as a researcher, I uh, thought what to do with this. And uh, um, uh, when I um, um, look uh, through uh, Wiki uh, projects, I uh, saw that we um, maybe uh, must have a chapter to uh, to deal with is to improve uh, uh, this in our country. And um, um, the main thing that I understood that uh, people are uh, ignorant uh, about Wikimedia, about Wikipedia. They uh, even don't know uh, how to deal with it. They know that there, there is a Wikipedia and you can <laughs> uh, use it, only use. And that's why I um, create a new commitment for our chapter. Um, every educated human uh, being should be aware and uh, uh, be able and have chance to participate in using and creating the Wikimedia content. Um, what I mean in this, that uh, Every um, every um, educated people, literally people, must know that uh, knew this uh, um, uh, that he uh, can use and create articles, and um, even he hadn't computer, he must know the uh, the place. Uh, um, um, where he uh, can go and do this. And uh, he, uh, there, there must be people who uh, tra training people, uh, to, to train them to show what to do and uh, only this case for small uh, nation can be <laughs> uh, help. And after, I, uh, as a researcher, I uh, outline uh, uh, the main uh, main problems of uh, um, which impedes. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Impetus uh, the development of uh, co content of Wikipedia. As I said, ignorance of society about possibilities, Wiki technology, Wiki project, uh, and uh, um, there is another problem that the, uh, the uh, um, intelligent people they are all, all busy with um, uh, with. Uh, uh, with uh, his work to um, to help his family to um, take care of uh, their family, and um, um, in Armenia we have uh, one big problem with guideline to uh, gu guidelines aren't in Armenian. We haven't so many people who speak. Uh, with fluency, uh, English or Russia. The, that is another problem we must uh, deal with. Um, and um, uh, we have man, many um, sites about Armenian content, uh, about museums, uh, but they are not coordinated. Uh, this is another problem that uh, you can't find uh, the uh, main uh, the uh, content what you want. Uh, we can it uh, uh, even on link um, show in Wikipedia in links. And uh, the, uh, the main problem is uh, absence of. Um, um, coordinated electronic environment in our language. Translators, um, uh, 
spectrum. Uh, you mean I, um, what I understood with, uh, with um, language environment? There are um, there are prog uh, programs, but they uh, are separate separate programs, and they don't um, coordinate it with each other. After uh, this researching, uh, I um, um, draw the, the maybe structure of uh, uh, for Wikimedia Armenia. Uh, the um, in the. Um, um, head of uh, um, um, this structure is Meta Team, who, who uh, coordinate all uh, the uh, of the or organization, um, um, and um, they had um, three sub -commit committee: propagation group, software group, and group uh, of moderators. Um, propagation group it is uh, for um, propagating Wikimed uh, Wikimedia, Wikipedia, um, 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 ideal uh, technology, ideology, and um, in uh, this uh, um, for propagation group, uh, I have an ideas to. Um, to organize uh, in every um, school uh, computer uh, classes. Uh, because of in Armenia, um, um, all schools have uh, computer classes and internet. If you uh, uh, establish uh, computer classes and um, teach uh, the uh, teacher of informatics to, um, to ha had uh, training abilities, uh, he, um, he or she can train uh, the uh, um, high school uh, pu uh, pupils and uh, their mothers, maybe grandmothers, or who c came to school. And in, e and in, in evening time, uh, to um, improve the content. Um, in Armenia, unfortunately, there are many uh, women who, uh, who is ed educated, but not uh, work housewives. They take care of their children. Another is software group uh, that I said that uh, uh, in Armenia, there, there is no coordinated um, electronic environment for Armenian language. Uh, I think it, uh, it must be um, permanent group, uh, uh, all time incre uh, increasing, improving uh, uh, the um, electronic environment for Armenian language. It is, um, uh, there is a contradiction in our country because uh, there are many high level programmers and, uh, um, and many software companies uh, work in, uh, in Armenia. But uh, the, the, there, there isn't uh, uh, the, uh, such group who uh, works on Armenian projects only and coordinated it. Maybe Wikimedia Foundation, uh, what our program can help with this, can organize this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need only one person to do this fetch again, to, to add it, or to add the code for your language. You don't uh, have to uh, have it centralized. You, have, you need to have your uh, software uh, developer, the 
Uh, you, you need online um, uh, development of uh, spell check or uh, translate and program. Maybe, but uh, you know, we ha have a programmer in Moscow. They do their spell checker, their uh, lingvo uh, for Armenian. Uh, in uh, Armenia, there are uh, one. We listen, but even in um, our w w word office, we haven't. <laughs> Maybe. What? Yes, I don't. Uh, I. Uh huh. Yes, but uh, no, nobody organized this. Yes, you are right. And thir third of a uh, group of moderat moderators. Um, you know, um, many people um, said that uh, Wikipedia is uh, no, not balanced. Uh, the content that um, maybe um, in um, one content is very spe specialized, another is so uh, um, superficial. Uh, in uh, Armenia, we, um, I, s I think all um, post-Soviet countries have an, um, academicians who um, uh, uh, not disengaged, but uh, they uh, ha hadn't um, co um, in, um, um, enga engaged in uh, in. No, um, in current programs, and um, we can use uh, their forces for um, um, improving our content. And um, th their salary is very slow, and they work as superficial work. And uh, we can uh, we can uh, organize this in our uh, academic institutes, research institutes, too. Um, and maybe some of ac academics are um, responsible to one uh, rare uh, field of uh, content, uh, uh, another group for uh, another field. Uh, I think it is. Uh, it is. Be, um, they will be happy to the to do this, and uh, only they are ignorance of it. And one uh, thing I want to that um, Armenian. Her Armenian heritage is uh, very I think I spoke about it hey, uh, um, uh, Armenian heritage is uh, uh, so um, uh, rich and um, manifold that uh, it is uh, important not uh, only to us to um, uh, to maintain the heritage for uh, our uh, um, future uh, generations, uh, but all, uh, to all uh, world, because I can uh, ex exemplify this um, uh, the. Foundation, uh, the Tato Foundation of Kiev uh, finally was um, established um, uh, to, um, thanks to m manuscripts of um, our uh, uh, repository in Yerevan, uh, li literary repository in Yerevan, Matenaderan. And uh, we, uh, in Matenaderan, we have in many other languages manuscripts and um, 
Our um, uh, uh, letters uh, are uh, 1,600 years old, and uh, nothing is changed this time. It is uh, no difficult. Uh, there are no difficulty to um, translate it. And uh, you, you know that Armenian, um, um, Armenia uh, has Christi um, take Christianity um, in um, 301. And we have uh, many um, manuscripts about this, many Bibles uh, in many um, languages. It is, I think, important to Maybe it's right. Our questions. <laughs> 